call your representative. And I'm saying that because there is no way to really protect yourself if you don't get a public health policy that protects yourself. And I will explain why. If you take uh, the products that surround you, for example, water bottles, some of them are made of uh, polycarbonate, and so therefore you will be exposed to these estrogenic chemicals. So say now you buy a glass bottle, and you are so happy because it's a glass bottle, but you know that in order to sell that water, they, make, they have to make it sterile, right? So they filter it, and they filter it through plastic filters that may leach bisphenol A. And this is not a figment of our imagination, it was published. You can compare it, a plastic bottle containing polycarbonate will keep shedding estrogen. But a bottle that is a glass bottle doesn't mean that it will be totally free of it because in the manufacturing of foods, water, what have you, those things are being processed and you don't see what are being done to them. So at the end of the day, if you avoid plastics, you avoid pesticides because you try to get clean food, you do not microwave to avoid extra uh, breaking down of plastic and leaching. You do all that. At the end of the day, you do not know if your exposure decreased by 5% or by 95%. So there is why you need your legislator to be on your side. The point, once again, is that uh, it, it's rather limited what we can do we uh, ourselves in our daily life try to be as uh, uh, careful as possible in what we eat but we have no control of what happened before the food that we buy arrived at the supermarket and therefore uh, uh, it's important to to have a system whereby there are certain things that are not going to be tolerated and if we adopt that criteria, then yes, we can be more safe and consume more and better if we know that the, uh, what's going on before the food arrived at the supermarket has been, uh, let's say, uh, handled properly. There is legislation that requires that uh, these uh, 80,000 uh, compounds that are uh, in, the, in commerce be tested. That has not been uh, done, and only a very few hundreds of them have been tested. Yes, I would say that I think that we should change totally our outlook. We can go piecemeal, and I, I believe me that I'm very happy when I see that countries like Canada decide to regulate bisphenol A. I think that that is a significant step. But once I say that, we, are, we should learn about what we have done, that is systematically introduce chemicals and then find that they are bad for us. I think that Carlos had said that before, that we have to put the burden of proving a chemical to be safe, and that burden has to be in the industry that wants to introduce that. For the time being, the idea is a chemical has the same rights than a human, an individual in an American court. You are innocent before, uh, until you are proven guilty. Well, that shouldn't be. That shouldn't be at all. That has to change. And it has to change with a different outlook that will in, we have to change in many other aspects. So I just don't want to tell you that we should change our consuming uh, consumer patterns. But I think that uh, because it sounds too sad for people that like to spend money, but we are producing a lot of waste. 
And we have, if you go to an American supermarket, maybe you have 200 different shampoos to choose from. And so each one is made different from the other because it has a different dye, a different color, a different whatever. But all in principle are the same thing, a detergent. So I think that we have to be a lot more cautious about what is that we throw into the environment because this is going, uh, we are allowing this to happen too soon without knowing exactly what these chemicals do. And actually I propose many times, but nobody listens to me, that we should get to write a white paper. Forget bisphenol A, forget a chemical in particular, but we should ask the question in which conditions I would like chemical X to be relayed uh, released into the environment. And if you can build that paper, maybe we can start to be proactive, we can start to think before we do. And for that I think that we need ethicists, we need lawyers involved with this, we need lots of lawyers working in this problem because I don't have a right not to be intoxicated. And that I find uh, very shocking. I don't have a right to not to be intoxicated. So it means that I walk on the street and anything that is out there will hit me and I can be contracting a disease out of that. And this is because of human action. Someone else is putting that into the environment. It's not just the virus that I get because I'm in a universe of living things. And I think that this has to be addressed. we are acting in a reactive way. It seems that we are catching up with the consequences of our uh, poorly thought actions. In other words, we release chemicals into the environment and then we find out that they produce unexpected effects. That goes all the time. I think that maybe we should pause and ask the question, which are the conditions that would allow a mature society to determine this chemical is safe, this chemical can be released in the environment. We should pause and ask that question. And I think that a way to do that is what is called a white paper. Instead of thinking of bisphenol A or any chemical in particular, you start thinking, let's see, a chemical is produced and is used for X, and we can put five cases, so we do not personalize or get uh, to uh, focus in one chemical, but it's, we have to go and ask questions. What is the use? Uh, why we need this chemical, etc. I cannot tell you all that because I don't even have thought about all the details. But I think that we need ethicists, lawyers, chemists, different people to ask seriously the question, in, in order to be a functional society, what is the process we will go, uh, will use to determine whether or not a chemical has to be allowed to get into the environment? You see, I think that uh, one of the reasons why I think that we have to do a white paper is because we have to decide why we want the chemicals. So I think that if we have a very uh, elaborate description of what we want to achieve, that costs nothing. It's only thinking about it and is to build up a strategy about how to deal with uh, these problems. There is all this movement that is called green chemistry, whereby they are trying to help in two ends. One is how you synthesize compounds, producing uh, less harmful byproducts or containing the reaction. 
And then on the other hand is how can we destru destroy the things that we do not want to go into the environment. So they are working with that problem, that is how to limit all these byproducts. There is the problem that uh, you mentioned about the pharmaceutical industry. And I uh, think that inherently the problem is that if you're a pharmaceutical industry, your interest is in making money, it's profit, it's not in safety and all that. So I think that they should conduct the tests they conduct. I think that uh, we know that it doesn't work because <laughs> there have been many incidents of they uh, not, uh, well, hitting data. And I think that that could be also uh, curtailed because instead, you know, the budget is used in given ways by our government, but uh, we don't use too much of the budget doing research and the things I care about. I mean, we are using a lot more in, a, say, uh, defense. So we could have more inspections. We should be able to say that records are not uh, confidential regarding FDA, and FDA can come any day and take anything they want. So I think that we can regulate if we are all in the same, on the same page, but we have to go through the process of instead of talking about specifics, just talk about from A, which chemicals are we going to allow, for what, how they are going to, we are going to trace them in the environment. We have to get into a big um, thought process because the way we are doing things is not good and piecemeal solutions are not good. So that is why I'm saying you need ethicists, lawyers, chemists, and then think very uh, profoundly about how we are going to um, save the world for our children so that they don't uh, have the problems that we are seeing that are increasing in human populations. Uh, alter reproduction, autism, all these things have been linked to environmental causes obesity, diabetes. So I think that what is at stake is too big. I mean, reproduction means if we do not reproduce, we'll go extinct. It's the, the destiny of 90% of the species that ever existed. We would like to accelerate that.